Hello and welcome of course to another tune set up within the world of Gran Turismo 7 and this time I'm doing a tune for a specific event within the game. You don't have to use this car for it of course, this is just the one I happen to use. It is the Radical, a pretty well priced car, it's around 120 grand and it has excellent fuel consumption, really good performance for its power and a surprisingly good point level even in comparison to what something like this would have been like in previous games. I'm just thinking back to how crazy high the Red Bull Jr. was in Gran Turismo 6 for example. Now as far as this particular tune, as I'll have probably put in the thumbnail anyway, this is in particular for one of the endurance missions. Currently we have eight of those in the game and this is for like the third or fourth one along. There's an Alfa Romeo 8C in the thumbnail for it and it is of course on Kyoto. Now the event is for, I think it's 550 point vehicles. I mean, that's what the car's sitting at. So if I recall correctly, I think that is it. So to work from extreme downwards, we've got nothing on the extreme section fitted. Then as far as the racing stuff, it's got anti-lag, polished ports, the racing silencer, racing filter, intercooler, of course the pads, the discs, you could go for slotted or drilled, it's down to you. We've got the clutch and flywheel, Fully customized suspension, of course, and then that is it for that section. Then to jump to semi-racing, we've got the fully customized computer and, of course, the fully customized diff. Then to jump to club sports, we have sports suspension says it's fitted, but I believe that was stock. If I recall correctly, it comes with the car. You definitely want the power restrictor just in general if you need to use it for different events. And of course the ballast as well for the same reason. It's just handy to have it and it's pretty cheap. Again, sports silencer I'm pretty sure came with it as standard. And then sports hard tyres. So as far as what you need to buy, it's pretty simple. So if we then jump back into the garage, I'll show you how I've set up the car. And then of course we'll jump into the event so you can see me actually using it. See the kind of distance ahead from other cars, etc. So for the settings... Of course, we've already got the sports hards fitted for the suspension, and it's already a very good car, so you don't need to do a crazy amount to it anyway, but already it's got pretty much a perfect suspension setup, to be honest. In fact, thinking back, I don't think I've actually touched this at all, but if you compare this to the stock numbers and you can find out for yourself, I may have adjusted the toe or something, so just double check that. It's on 75 for the ride height, anti-roll is on 4. For the compression, we've got 30, 40 on the expansion. The frequency is 3.10 front and back. The camber is one degree on the front, as you can see, two degrees on the rear, then no toe on the back and 0.10 on the front. As far as the diff, again, I don't recall, to be honest, doing much to this, if anything, then it's on 10, 35 and 45. As far as the rest, well, the transmission would take you over the, the point level anyway, so I didn't bother fitting that. Plus the track doesn't really need it on this occasion. Downforce you cannot adjust on this car anyway, and you don't technically need to add any ballast or reduce the power. So you don't have to fit those things, but as I said earlier on, they just come in handy if you do need to restrict the power or make it heavier to enter a certain race or online lobby. It's just a good thing to have. And of course, don't forget to have your anti-lag set on strong so it does its job properly. So that's it for the parts. Now, of course, let's jump out on the track into the race so you can see it in action. So in this particular event, I will say that the Radical, and I'm sure this goes for other cars as well, it makes it pretty easy, to be honest. You're not going to jump to the front of the pack within like 30 seconds or something, but the car's fantastic fuel economy, pretty good tyre wear, and just overall well-balanced performance of being light and pretty good in a straight line but mostly through corners means it's just a good package to work with. If this was something like Le Mans, maybe not so much, but here on Kyoto it's very nicely set up. Now for me I went super lazy with this and just ran the car with traction control on one so then I didn't even need to worry when the tyres started to degrade a little bit. To be honest though, you don't have to do that. As far as the fuel leanness, you can also have that set pretty low as well. I started the event with it a bit higher just to make it last that a bit longer but then when I realized it was gonna last ages anyway I dropped it back down to one so you have peak power then as well in terms of the lap times it might take you a couple of laps to catch up to that first place car which in my case was an Alfa Romeo 8C I don't recall exactly when I caught him it was fairly early on and then I finished the event with I believe it was one pit in if I recall correctly I could be wrong but I think it was one 
and won by about 40 seconds or so overall. So it's a pretty easy victory. 40 seconds doesn't sound like much for an hour race, but for a car that's got nowhere near the power and torque of anything else on the grid, it's a pretty good job overall. And of course, as I've said before, I'm not like a top 10 in the world driver, so if you are quicker than me, you'll have an even bigger win margin. Overall, it's a pretty easy event. Just get in a groove, learn the car, flow through those corners, you'll have no trouble at all. I found it to be an almost boring race, to be honest, because it was so easy. Ultimately then, of course, stick around on the channel for more tunes. I've already done other tunes for specific events or certain point levels, etc. So check those out. They are in their own playlist, which you can see on screen. And of course, stick around on the channel for more tunes in future as well. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.